sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Fractions 101, Part 2. Uh, today we're going to be looking at comparing and ordering fractions. Um, this is going to be a little more uh, lengthy of a, a video than what we're used to because we have a lot of things we have to discuss. There are some major principles, three major principles that I want to touch on today. Um, so let's get right down to it, okay? Um, we did talk about what a fraction was or is in the last video, so we won't really go there today. We're going to get right into um, comparing fractions. So if I were to put these two fractions on the board, one half Okay, so we've got 1 half, 2 over 2, and 3 over 2. If I were to ask you, are these fractions in order, what would your answer be? If you looked at these fractions and you think that they are in order, you're correct. Okay, They're in order from the smallest. <laughs> the way we know that is by listening to principle number 1. And principle number 1, when you're comparing and ordering fractions, is... If two fractions have the same denominator, the one with the greater numerator is greater. So here we have fractions with the same denominator. So you look at the numerator, and the numerator that's the greatest is the greatest value fraction. The numerator that is the lowest is the lowest value fraction. So that's principle number one. So now that you know uh, principle number one, principle number two is sort of the reverse. So let's say, take this for example. Okay, so we've got uh, two-thirds and two-fifths. Okay? This rule states that if you have two fractions with different denominators but the same numerators, then the denominator with the highest value is actually the lowest valued fraction. Because if you think about it, it makes sense, right? If I were to take this 2 thirds here, right, and just sort of draw you a circle. By the way, my circles are never that good. <laughs> split it into thirds. Let's pretend, for the sake of argument, those are equal thirds, right? And color in two of them. Shade in one here and a second one here, right? That's two-thirds. Now, if I draw the same circle over here and try and split it into five shapes, one, two, three, four, five, good enough, okay? And color in two of those. Here you got one, and there's a second one. Clearly, this is more of a value than this, right? Two equal parts of this is more than two equal parts of this. And that's essentially principle number two. If two fractions have the same numerator, the one with the greater denominator is less. Okay, here comes principle number three. Okay, this is a very important one because what happens if I give you some fractions that are not equal? They don't have the same denominator. They don't have the same numerator. They're completely different fractions. There's nothing in common. Then what do you do? Well, there is a way you can try and figure out, if I give you two numbers, you can try and figure out which one's greater by using benchmark numbers, okay? Benchmark numbers are 0, 1, and 1 half. And why we call these benchmark numbers is, well, because they are. They're really good benchmarks. So let's say, for example, I was to give you uh, 2 fifths, and maybe we'll just stick with the one we had before. 2 fifths and three-fourths, okay? We could tell by comparing to the benchmark numbers which one is greater because if we look, right, two-fifths, if you have two pieces of five, is that greater than or less than one-half, right? We know that it's less than one-half. It's less than half of the five. Okay? We look at 3 fourths, do we know, is that greater than or less than half of the whole? Well, it's actually greater than half of the whole. If you have four equal parts and you're giving three of them, 
obviously that's more than half of the four. This is obviously less than half of the four. So if you were asked which one is greater of these two fractions, hopefully you would be able to say without a doubt after using your benchmark numbers that three quarters is the greater number of the two. So principle number three, I'll say it again, some fractions, not all of them, but some can be compared by relating them to benchmark numbers such as zero, one, and one half. Okay, now comes the fourth principle. And this one is the one that you're not going to like, but it's one you're probably going to have to resort to in a lot of situations uh, going through this unit. And it's knowing how to make equivalent fractions. Because if you can take two fractions find a like denominator, make them equivalent to that like denominator, then it's easy to figure out which one is worth more. But it's that converting of a base fraction to an equivalent fraction of higher value that's a little difficult. You have to find a like denominator. So let's, let, let's show you an example. Let's take, uh, I don't know, four-fifths and three-fourths. Okay? We have a problem here. Because we can't use theory number one, right? They don't have the same denominator. We can't use principle number two because they don't have the same numerator. We can't use principle number three because they're both higher than one half, but they're both less than one. So what do we do? Well, we're going to have to use these equivalent fractions. What we have to do is try and figure out a way to create a like denominator so that they're easy to compare. So we have the numbers 5, and we have the numbers 4. The easiest way to do this, and this is where your knowledge of multiplication comes in, the easiest way to do this is to start listing the multiples until you can find a common multiple. So multiples of 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. I'm just going to 10 for good measure, okay? For 4, well, let's go. We got 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, and 40. All right. Now, have we found a number that is the same in these sets? 4, clearly not there. 8, no. 12, no. 16, no. We've got 20. Okay, so there's a possibility here. 24, no. 28, no. 32, no. 36, no. And we've got 40. Okay, so let's have a look at this situation. We've decided we can't use any of the three principles we've talked about before, which means going to principle 4, finding an equivalent fraction. What we decided here is we have to create a list of factors for both of our denominators, 5 and 4. And if we find any like factors, then we know we've got a common denominator that we can use here. And all we have to do is multiply across the fraction. That's what we have to do next. So we've isolated this. We said 20 and 40 are common denominators. Let's work with 20 because it's a smaller number here. It's easy to work with. So what we've decided here is 5. We have to get 5 to 20. Well, how do we do that? 1, 2, 3, well, actually, 1, 2, 3, 4 times. So clearly, 5 times 4 is 20. So 4 over 5, right, times 4 times 4 equals 16 over 20, okay? Four, you have to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 4. 16 over 20 is our new equivalent fraction, okay? The next one we have to do is the 3 over 4. So let's do that one. 3 over 4 times what? Well, we have to figure that out, right? So we've got, we have to multiply again. So we went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 this time. So 4 times 5, 3 times 5 because we want to get that 20. So there's the 20, 3 times 5 is 15 over 20. Do we now have fractions that we can work with? We've said 
4 fifths, an equivalent fraction, is 16 over 20. 3 fourths, an equivalent fraction, is 15 over 20. I think we've got something we can work with here. If we look at these two, we can now follow principle number one. They have like denominators. So the numerator with the highest value is the greatest fraction, and that is 16 over 20. So therefore, 4 over fifths is greater than 3 over 4. And there's your therefore statement, OK? That is, in a nutshell, how to do equivalent fractions. It seems like a daunting, huge task, but when you break it down like this, it's quite easy. Find the factors of your denominator to create a common denominator. Find a like term. Once you've found it, figure out what you have to multiply across by. You have to multiply the denominator, in this case by 4 to get to 20. What you do to the bottom, you do to the top. Same thing with this guy. 4 times 5 gets us to 20. What you do to the bottom, you do to the top. Now you have like denominators. Boom, the greatest numerator, you've got the greater fraction. Okay? If you have any questions, please don't be afraid to write a comment on the blog, and I'll do my best to help you with this process.